Well, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for being part of this morning show. This is Why in the Morning. Welcome back. It's all about matters concerning youth and politics today on this particular Monday morning. My name is Ram Aguko. It's a pleasure being with you. We're coming to you live from the Broadcasting House in Nairobi, Kenya, also streaming live through our website that's a www that's uh, dot okbc dot co dot ke forward slash y254 we value your feedback let us know where you're watching us from and of course we shall sample your bit of your feedback as you continue with this morning show it's all about matters concerning youth and politics we want to take a look at what has been taking trends in the past few days and in the past one week and what should we expect in the coming week. Uh, to help me in this conversation, I am joined by uh, to my far right, Gerald Minishi, and next to me, I am with David Wiper, both uh, political analysts and, of course, youth leaders. Uh, Karibu Nisana, gentlemen. Wazalendo. <laughs> <laughs> Let me start with you, Gerald. Uh, tell us a bit more about what you do. Oh, currently, I'm Gerald Minishi. Currently, I'm uh, working for the United Nations Human Settlements Program. I'm also a global youth ambassador for the World Charity Organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm happy to be on the show and thank to make you. some significant contributions. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for coming, my brother. Yeah. And uh, David Wiper, tell us a bit more about what you do. Okay, thank you so much, Ram. By name, I'm David Wiper, just like where you put it. I am a political scientist by profession. I am a former comrades boss at the Catholic University of Eastern Africa. Mm -hmm. Currently, I consult for Azimio La Umoja, a Young Tax, under the auspices of Azimio La Umoja, One Kenya Coalition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is patron that that is chaired by Raila Molo Dinga, who is our boss. Mm -hmm. So it is a pleasure to be here because this is an enabling environment to distill issues and to give Kenyans and the entire globe real facts and uh, what would like or what we would like to see as a country thank you so much for coming brother we talk facts, huh? <laughs> Real facts. facts. Yeah, facts. <laughs> and of course uh, uh the hashtag is why in the morning at ramaguko and at y254 channel that's where you can be able to find us here over to facebook page on facebook that's, that's at y254 followers on that page like the page and of course engage with us keep talking to us this is youth and politics let's talk about matters concerning you and of course let us know what you think about the stories making headlines we have a copy of the people daily gentlemen i believe you have your copies with you Yes, and yeah. of course, uh, I also have mine here online. We are going to take a look at this particular paper and uh, dissect a few stories here. One story that is making headlines in uh, this particular paper is concerning the uh, flag bearer. We mentioned it earlier on today, this morning conversation, in this morning show before we went on that break. The Deputy President William Ruto and as a new one Kenya leader, Raila Odinga, are bracing for a tablet week with only seven days to the deadline for naming their running mate. And uh, this is uh, the week that will either make or break their presidential bids because uh, the person that they will choose to bear, uh, to, to be their running mate, will either be, bring good tidings or bring problems. So the question is, who will it be? How will they sort it out? And uh, how will they manage to pick the right person for themselves? Remember, initially, the IBC uh, had given until 28th of April this year as the final date for presidential uh, uh, hopefuls, those who want to vie for, uh, 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 to submit their names alongside those who will be uh, coming with their running mates. But after uh, uh, consultations with uh, Royal Odinga and the Ruto camp, the period was extended to 16th of May. And 16th is next week. So the question is, how will it be? And do we expect to see turbulent times? Let me start with you, David Wiper. Your thoughts on that? Okay, thank you, Ram. And thank you for the beautiful conversation or the topic that we want to delve into this morning. So the question of the choice of the deputy president, more so for the two forefront runners, for the August polls, is not just tough, but uh, also interest, interesting. Mm -hmm. Because indeed, it is the key determining factor 
of who is going to become the next president of this country. Mm -hmm. And basically, like we have seen it, the other day there's Miola Umoja, where I belong, we stated very clearly and categorically mm -hmm. that the only method that we're going to use to decide on whoever becomes the deputy president of Azimiola Umoja, whoever, whoever is going to deputy, uh, deputy Israela, is to consider the person that do not have the character of the current deputy president that we have in Kenya. <laughs> so that is the very. only factor <laughs> that we are going to use. And to speak uh, of that, we are simply going to check on the loyalty. The biggest consideration that we put in place to decide on the next deputy president of this country, in Azimiola Umoja, is the loyalty. To so, who? To Raila Amolo Odinga and to the Republic of, of Kenya. And more so, to Raila Amolo Odinga. Is he or she a person that owns the same aspirations for the country with the Raila Amolo Odinga? Is he, is he or she a person that is more compatible with the Raila Amolo Odinga? Because you know the presidency is a unit. So basically, that is the only consideration, the major consideration that we, that, that we have. As long as somebody doesn't have the traits of the... Of the deputy current deputy, deputy president, who is William Ruto, Ruto. And is loyal to Raila Odinga. And a, pers a person who is going to walk left, right, and center, chastising, or rather castigating his boss. So basically, that is what we are going to look at. But forget okay. about that or leave alone that. There are also other weighty and the major considerations that we have to put in place. Like it is all about winning an election. It is a coalition. So we want to b win this election and not just win, but to win by a landslide. So you have to be a person that carries with him or her numerical strength, a person that has fought for something in this country, a person that stands for constitutionalism, a person that stands for the rule of law, and a person that would complement Raila Molo Dinga in his nature. Because currently, as the conversation is towards the election that we are going to take, it is a liberation and it is an economic one. Do you have economic credentials to deputize Israel Amolo Dinka? Do you have economic credentials to revitalize our economy? Because basically, that is where we are as a state and as a country today. Um, um, uh, okay, Gerald, uh, your opening remarks in regards to that? Th your thoughts? Okay, uh, Otto Wolle Bismarck of Germany said that uh, politics is the art of the possible. Meaning that uh, in politics, never say never. With regards to the identity politics in Kenya right now, we realize that um, this run, running mate issue has become, co has become conspicuous. And it's an issue which has been uh, undertaken with the painstaking uh, excellence and, 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 and some, some kind of uh, seriousness. If you look at, for example, in the Azimio One Kenya Alliance camp, and when, when you look at the Kenya Kwanzaa, all of them, they, they want to be strategic, whoever they choose to be their running mate. And uh, my colleague here has touched on some, some, some issues, the issue about consideration. If we are going to consider, for example, uh, let's say, for example, uh, Raila chooses Kalonzo to be his uh, running mate. Are we going to experience the, the kind of fallout that we are experiencing right now between President Ruru Kenyatta and DPP President Ruto? Those are the kind of issues that, you know, that are at the table right now. So it matters, it, it matters to do with uh, which is the best, best candidate with regards to these uh, two horses as purported by our medias. I think uh, it is deb debatable. It is debatable based on a lot of factors. And remember, politics is all about interest. Mm. Yeah, it is not about uh, all the common money. It's about interest. Now, 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 now let me come to you, Wiper. There's something you said that uh, I would like to really... Um discover. As long as someone is royal to Raila Molo Dinga, is that what is important for Kenyans, especially for the youth? And, 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 and you mentioned that uh, if they are loyal to Raila and to, as long as they are the opposite of the Deputy President William Ruto, where does the common Mwalainchi come in this area? I am a political scientist, and just like my brother has put it, that politics is all about interest. Mm. And whatever matters in politics is the interest of the common man. And I believe that in the camp that I vote for, and that is Azimula Umoja, whatever we have there is to fight and to liberate Kenyans from the wanton 
economic ravage that we experience currently as a country. So generally, it is a uh, as the muse a conglomeration of the interest of the common man. And so whatever we are looking for is uh, a government that would operate very peacefully, a government that would work with the unity that we expect as a country. But, but you've not answered answer the question. Where does the common man in Chi work it, it, it come into play? Because all you're looking at is loyalty to Raila Odinga, uh, Odinga and whoever is coming is going to be the opposite of DPT William Bruto. Whatever we are looking for, if we talk about loyalty to Raila Odinga, we are look we are not we, we don't want a person that is of ambitious. We don't want a person that would bring mayhem into the government. We want a person that, if at all you are ideological, you feel like there is an idea that you want to be implemented, then you share it with your boss. Basically, that is what we are looking for. We are not looking for a person that would start to campaign on the second day after swearing in of Raila Molo Dingandim as the deputy. Mm. As some of them, you know, in Azimio, some of them have said that, you know, once we are sworn in and once we've taken over as, the, uh, as a unit and as a government, then on the next day we would, I would start to campaign to become the next president or the sixth president of this country. So that is one of the things that we, are not, we do not want to see or to encounter. And that is why we, are, we need somebody that is loyal, we need somebody that is going to be rational, and we need somebody who is not going to become a challenger. That you know you now you want to compete your boss. You need a psycho fund? Not necessarily a psycho fund. <laughs> Whatever I've said, do not have any relationship with psycho fans in as far as politics is concerned. It is all about giving yourself mm. to the commitment, giving yourself to the country, and basically executing your roles as the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya. But where does the common Mwananchi come? The, con the common Mwananchi, whatever we are talking about is the interest of the common monarchy, and that is why we are looking or we are pursuing the government of the Republic of Kenya. So in this so case, uh, Wiper, what you're saying is, uh, um, for a deputy president, just be loyal to your party leader and be the opposite of DP Ruto, you're good to go. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about that, uh, Gerald? Okay, I think uh, that's a very, very important question that you've asked. Where does the common monarchy come? That is the question, I think. Where does the common one inch come? And uh, if you look at all political leaders, if you ask me, I will say almost all of them, most of them, around three quarters, they are demagogues. And uh, demagogues, what uh, basically they do, they just come, they play with the minds of the common one inch. They know, for example, you want something or you are lacking something. So they are using your need to, as a, to exploit or the other to pursue their selfish interest. And, uh, when you look at identity politics right now in Kenya, being, uh, for example, uh, these two horses, as I've, I've mentioned earlier, Raila Odinga and uh, Dipi Ruto, you realize that uh, they've attracted, attracted a lot of psycho fans, by the way. And even if you look, for example, at Dipi Ruto, which, kind of, which candidate do you think can he choose? Regadi, look at Rigadi, look at his history. Look at his political ped pedigree. Look at Kiture uh, Kindiki. I think all of them is just about power sharing. So the common Mwananchi, the common Mwananchi is left, is left, you know, is left on the blues. Is left uh, hanging because uh, it's about sharing, sharing cake, national cake, and uh, these political leaders are uh, fighting for their political positions. Mm -hmm. So in as much, I think we are not. A, remember, we are not a mature democracy. We are partial democratic state just as the Freedom House categorized us. So there's still a lot to learn and there's still a lot that we, we need to do and we need to embrace as a, as a country. I'm looking at Kalonzo Musioka. Is he a possible uh, candidate for this particular position? Because, uh, yes, at some point, Kalonzo Musioka said that, you know what, he, 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 he should not even be put in, 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 a, in a position where he's con contesting to be the deputy because he was once a vice president. He has led the country in so many positions before. Is he a possible candidate for, the, for this particular position? David. Talking, talking of the political stature of Kalonzo Musioka is something that is, uh, should be held high. And as one of the members of Azimio Umoja, 
I just empathize with Kalonzo because of his late reactions and character. Because mm. he was the best suited to deputies, deputies Raila Molo Dinga, owing to the fact that he's more experienced in politics. He has been the vice president of, the, of this country. He has held various positions in the government as a minister, as a foreign minister. Kalonzo Musioka was there during the Kanu era. He worked together with Moi. Kalonzo Musioka lately has been a diplomat. He has been champion, championing for peace, even in South, South Sudan. So he has, he's, a, he's a global diplomat. And so he carries with him a lot of a huge political experience.